What's going on everyone, Desktops Gaming here. Welcome back to the channel. Today we have something pretty cool sent over from Nwin, the new BR24. This is a pretty interesting 240 millimeter AO. This one has a little fan or turbine here on the pump block combo that's supposed to force air down to the VRM. Uh, so let's dive into testing it today. We'll test it against a 360 millimeter radiator. We put in this one, uh, if you go to our last build blog we did. We're gonna put it against the test today, not so much in cooling performance, but to see if it really does make a difference in VRM thermal temperatures. Let's dive into it. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I definitely appreciate you hitting the like button and subscribing. If you like what we do here, we do PC builds and things of that nature. Today, we're gonna dive into like, taking a look at this BR24 from Enwin. We already have the, a Castle 360EX from Deepcool installed in the last build we did, which is actually in the Matrix 70, another case from Deepcool. So we'll be reusing this build today, except for now, we're gonna be installing in a 5600X. We pulled this CPU out of my personal rig. I was waiting on a 5800X to come in and it wasn't here in time, but still want to go on with video today, so I went ahead and pulled it out of my personal rig to test in it today. I wanted something a little a little bit warmer, something I could push a little higher, and that my 3600 is currently being used. So we're gonna use this one today. It already has that Castle 360EX in there. So we're gonna go ahead and pop the CPU in, and we're not really looking at thermal tests as far as what it can handle in the CPU, but when we start pushing more power to the CPU, you know, we're gonna overclock the CPU a little bit, keep that the same on both, but I want to more so see what the VRM is looking like. So this one having that little fan on it, I want to see if it does make a difference or if your case will handle that mostly. Uh, so I'll try to keep all the case fan airflow control the exact same. One thing that's going to be changing in here, try to eliminate the variable down to just that little cooler. So let's go ahead and get the 5600X installed in this system. We'll run a baseline test with this cooler in it, and then we'll swap it out to the BR24 from N1 and we'll see if it really does make a difference. successfully installed the 5600X back inside of this case here. We're gonna put the front timber glass back on and I believe we'll just do some Cinnamon uh, R20 test and cycle this a couple times. So I'm not really looking for thermals of the cooler. I would expect a 360 to be able to outperform a 240. We'll still see you know, how the thermals perform with this 5600X in here. Again, not a super hot wattage TDP part, but I wanted to put this one in here today and then you know we'll do some overclocking and try to keep them pretty much like to like and just see what the VRM temperatures and the you know choke temperatures do uh, measuring with Hardware Info 64. We'll go and run uh, through some tests here. I'll probably let it run about 30 minutes just to let the case fully soak with heat and just see if this fan makes a difference. All right, let's go ahead and dive into uh, seeing what this one will do and then I'll come back with uh, what kind of performance numbers we can expect. We'll go ahead and hook this one up and I'll see you once we get done with some testing. All right, so now the first test has completed. We let that run for 30 minutes and swap the BR24 in for the Castle 360EX and see if this little turbine fan makes a difference. Uh, we're gonna be running on the same set. Go ahead and list them up here. Uh, we had the Ryzen 5 5600X. We overclocked it to 4.8 gigahertz all core. And then I believe I sent a get voltage of uh, 1.4 volts. Just to make sure we maintain that, no problem. Uh, probably doesn't need quite that much or maybe it does it at uh, 4.8. We don't run one there all the time, but I wanted to kind of stress the VRM as much as possible just to see if we do get any kind of throttling, which we didn't on the first test after 30 minutes. So we're gonna go and swap the VR24 in its place and see if this keeps those thermals down on those MOSFETs. Let's go and get it swapped over. The test just concluded, and I will say I'm a little impressed with the results. So let's run them down real quick. On the Deepcool Castle 360X, we had in here first, getting VRM MOS temps as far as a Hardware Info 64 goes. It recorded a maximum of around 44C after about 30 minutes of Cinnamon R23. So I mean, that's still well within range. I mean, you don't really have to start worrying about, you know, MOS temperatures on any kind of motherboard like that until you're pushing, you know, close to 100C or more. So that's still, definitely within range. Now I could, definitely could see if we were running a higher end chip. This is only the 5600X. So we, I did overclock it at 4.8 and we hit it about 1.4 volts or so just to maintain that, no problem. And I wanted to kind of stress the VRMs as much as possible. 
I could definitely see those temperatures going up and having a higher delta there if we were talking about a higher end TDP, you know, CPU. So if we were looking at something, say a 5900X or 5950X, this might make a difference. Now, once we put in the BR24, I did notice a difference in testing. So we still ran this one the same way, under the same conditions, uh, just installed in the top here, exhausting out the same way we did the, the Castle 360X that was in here originally. We saw that come down all the way to an average of 37C. So it, it de technically did work, it did drop. Now we'll say the fan or little turbine that's on the cooler is noticeably audible. I mean, that is the kind of trade-off you get. Surprisingly enough, we were seeing temperatures pretty close as far as just CPU temperatures, what we were getting off of the Deepcool 360X. We were maintaining, after 30 minutes or so, it was an average around 8060 at its hottest. The BR24 was keeping up with that just fine. So a little bit of diminishing returns there as far as cooling of what you'll get out of 360 versus a good 240. And, you know, and that's not to say anything bad about the Castle 360EX, but the main difference was a noticeably or noticeable difference in sound. The 360 mil was a lot quieter. Fans were allowed to run a lot quieter and still maintain the same temperature. So that means I could have cranked the fans on that 360 and maintain it even lower CPU temperature yeah, than possibly this 240 could give me. But it was a noticeable difference between these uh, VRM temps with this little turbine cooler on. Now it wasn't a huge difference, only a couple, you know, 5C, 6C tops. But I could definitely see this being more useful if in a situation where you did have, say, higher wattage in TDP part or, a, you know, a higher wattage CPU where you're overclocking it to the max and you're pushing those VRMs a lot more than what we are with this 5600X today. I could see that making a difference if you're worried about stability, because I mean, keeping your VRMs cool does make a difference in stability. That's why a lot of, you know, water block manufacturers will make monoblocks that cover not only the CPU die, but the VRM heat sinks around it. That's why it is important to have good beefy VRM heat sinks if you're going to, you know, push overclocks and things like that. Once you get into, especially higher end CPUs and pushing a lot more voltage through those VRMs, it, you know, it, it's definitely the cleaner power you can give your CPU, the more stable your overclocks are going to be. Check out, so that about wraps it up. I was definitely curious to see how this thing tested today. Again, it was a noticeable difference in you know, how loud this one got compared to the 360, but that turbine cooler did make a difference on cooling the VRMs compared to the 360X. Check out, check out uh, if you want to see how this build came together in its original orientation. I'll link it up here at the top here. Definitely drop a like in this video if you thought this was helpful. Subscribe uh, if you're new here. I would definitely appreciate that. Yeah, that wraps it up, guys. Appreciate you guys stopping by today. Take it easy.